Hi everyone, um, this is Lisa Richardson and I'm just going to show you um, a little bit about the Edith Wrap design. So as you can see from this design it uses a mixture of garter stitch and mosaic knitting. And mosaic knitting is just slip stitch um, with a little bit of garter stitch as well just so you've got more of a, um, a texture to it. And so you're only using one colour of yarn across a row at any one time. So it's not fair isle or intarsia. You're literally just knitting, purling and slipping stitches. The other part of the design where you're on your garter stitch sections, you've got some wrap stitches. And those wrap stitches mean that you create the wrap so you've got a wider end and a narrower end. And you can see here where you've got the um, this cream here going through and then just a little bit of green there. That's where you've knitted across and you've turned before the end of the row. So I'm going to show you a couple of the um, techniques, the wrap stitches and the mosaic knitting, um, just in case you've never done those before and you need a little bit of help with your, with your knitting as you're doing the design. So here I've started knitting um, some rows in garter stitch, it just in the Rowan um, cotton cashmere and I'm going to do the short row shaping. So I've knit a few stitches and the next stitch is going to be the wrap stitch. So you bring the yarn to the front of the work, slip the stitch, take the yarn to the back of the work, slip the same stitch back onto your left hand needle and you can see there you've actually got the um, the yarn that I'm knitting with is just wrapped around the base there. Then you turn and work the row. So when you turn, the yarn's on the wrong side for knitting, so you just take that back through the centre of your needles and you knit back along the row. What I've noticed when doing this as well, because you've got so many stitches on the row, it's quite useful to put markers along it. So if you have um, put a marker every 25 stitches or something like that, so as you're going along and it says knit 277, you can quickly go across as you go in and think, oh, I've done 25, 50 and so on, rather than having to count them every few times. Because I know even though I think I'm going to um, count every stitch as I'm knitting, by the time I've got to the end, I always think, oh, is that really the right amount? And I have to go back and recount. So placing those markers does help. So on here you can see I've done a couple of wrap stitches. And because it's in different colours with the garter stitch, you can really tell the one that you've actually done is around the base. If you use using um, the same colour on a row, which you will be doing sometimes on the pattern, you might want to put a marker next door to it, maybe a different coloured one, just so that as you're going along you don't you don't miss it as you're knitting across. So when you get to the row that says knit all the way over, when you get to those, I'll show you the next step. Stick with the white. So you knit all the way up into the first marked stitch. And the reason why you do this as well is just so that you don't end up with holes in the work. If you simply um, worked so far across and then turned without wrapping a stitch, you'd end up with little holes in your knitting. So you knit up to your first max stitch and then you have to knit those two stitches together. So all you're going to do is go into the wrap, which is the loop around the base, into the stitch on the needle and then just knit those together and then continue to your next, mat, next wrap stitch. So what you're doing is you're ending up with more rows knitted on one side of your work than the, on the other. So you just get an asymmetric wrap at the end. 
so here we have the next one so again just underneath the loop at the bottom through the stitch on the needle and knit those two together and continue to the end And there you can see the whites going all the way across and you've got slightly shorter sections of the peach in those two rows of white there. So now we're on to the slip stitch section. So on the main pattern, when you get onto that section, it asks you to knit a row and purl a row, which I've done here in the blue. So now we're just going to go ahead with the next row. So that is knit two. slip one with the yarn at the back so that's the yarn at the back of the work so you're just slipping the stitch and you slip that purl ways knit five slip one again with the yarn at the back so the yarn doesn't move you're just going to slip the stitch purl ways knit one and then repeat. So slip one with the yarn at the back, knit five. All you have to remember when you're slipping the stitch is not to pull the yarn too tight across because you don't want it to gather in, you want to keep that tension. Slip one, knit one, slip one, knit five. Slip one, knit one, slip one, knit five. Slip one, knit one, and then the last stitch is knit one. So next row. Because you're working this in garter stitch as well, you're on knitting this again. So it's knit two. And this time you're going to slip one with the yarn at the front of the work. So you bring the yarn to the front of the work and you slip the next stitch. And then knit five. So you need to take the yarn to the back and knit five. Slip one with the yarn at the front, so bring it back between the needles, slip the stitch, take the yarn back to knit the next stitch, bring the yarn forward, slip the stitch, and take the yarn back. And it's easy to keep the pattern because you're just knitting the same stitches in the same colour as you've got here, and the slip stitches will be the colour which you've previously worked on row, so the blue shade. So you can almost forget the pattern when you're doing the, the wrong side row. Just remember to move that yarn forward and back when you're slipping the stitches. Which I didn't just then. Slip it.
So you can see there that the slip stitches are carrying up the work. And the next row you go back to that blue shade. So you're going to knit three. Slip one with the yarn at the back. Three. Slip one with the yarn at the back. Knit three. And repeat to the end. So the yarn is staying at the back the whole way. You just either knitting or slipping stitches. You can see this time it's the peach shade that's been carried up the work. So the next row, instead of doing a garter stitch row where you're knitting on the wrong side row, this one you're going to be purling. You're still going to be purling the same blue stitches with the same yarn and slipping the, the orange one. Purl three. And this time when you're slipping the stitch, you're slipping it with the yarn at the front but you don't need to move it because it's already there because you've been purling so just slip the stitch. So there you go, you've got the, the peach coming up this time. And I would take the yarn up the side of the work as well, rather than um, cutting it off. There are certain sections where if you was going from the cream here and you're not going to use it for a few rows, you could, you could cut the cream off and then rejoin it in there. Um, but most of the time just continue it up the side so you don't have many ends to sew in at the end.